So now we're being asked a little bit to explain a little bit more about sound pressure level and maybe to try and help you figure out what you're looking for. Again, as, uh, as I said, sound pressure level can be measured, you know, a meter or a little bit more than a yard from the driver or sometimes three meters or about 10 feet from the driver. Uh, what, what's the amount of sound pressure level you want to look for? Well, um, let's take a look at some of our digital systems that we have out there. A compact disc was designed to have 96 decibels of dynamic range, and that means the difference between the quietest sound and the loudest sound. There's a reason they came up with that, by the way. The uh, original engineers of, around the compact disc were also people who loved music, and it was determined that some of the great symphonies that were written by Beethoven and others had 96 dB of sound pressure of a dynamic range between the quietest passage and the loudest passage going. We're not going to devolve into a digital audio right here now, but you know one of the points of of digital sound was that by eliminating the noise, you could just hear that entire dynamic range. Well, therefore, we could say that a good sound pressure level for a product is also 96 decibels, because that would mean that it can reproduce the sound that we heard in the symphony hall at exactly the same levels as it was played, from the quietest sound to the loudest sound. That may be a bit more than we want to hear, but we can also say generally that we are looking for sound systems that probably are able to reproduce in a range that we're listening to. So say this portable product, which we're likely to listen to quite up close, maybe only a few feet away, if it can generate sound pressure levels in the 80 or so decibel range, it's going to really be pretty loud for us. And in fact, through good engineering, it will do that. A bigger piece like this, or this uh, 2.1 system with a subwoofer and, and separate drivers, can reproduce a sound pressure level in the high 90s or even above 100 decibels. There's a limit to how much we need. Uh, at a certain point, your ears start to bleed. So sounds like the space shuttle taking off really pre-produce sound pressure levels in the 140, 150, 160 decibel range. If uh, you bothered to watch some of the earlier videos, you remember that a decibel is the smallest sound we can hear, but that the measurement of this skill is logarithmic, so it goes up really fast. Every three decibels is twice as loud, and so you can understand that if we think that an 80 so decibel range is a pretty good listening sound pressure level, that uh, 83 is twice, 86 is four times, 89 is eight times, you get the picture. By the time we're getting up in the high 90s or 100s, it's way, way, way louder than, than the uh, sound at the lower levels. But if it's much below that level, then what happens is it's so far down that it can't reproduce the dynamic range of the music and what you get is compression. Compression simply means that, that the amplifier and the sound system cannot reproduce the full sound, so it's just compressing it. Again, if you looked at the oscilloscope, you'd literally see the tops and bottoms of the waves mush down. And what that really means is that it's just not going to sound natural. It's going to sound more nasally or more compressed, like there's less air in the room, and it just may not be as enjoyable. Of course, it depends on what your use of the product is, but you want to get enough sound pressure level to make it right. If you want a party piece, well, you're going to need something that's close to 100 decibels because that way you know that everyone in the room is going to be able to hear this at the volume that it was originally performed at. And that's why sound pressure level is good. One of the other things, and it relates back to power, is, is as the amount of sound pressure level increases, as that decibel curve mounts up, as we go up and we keep doubling and doubling the amount of sound, we're also increasing the amount of power we need. 
because when we go back and as we described this little motor which is a speaker essentially as it vibrates it's got to push air in the room well very high frequencies are easy to push they're very small it doesn't have to push a lot of air but if you remember we said that the lowest sound that you can hear is a 20 cycle or 20 hertz note of the open E on a pipe organ. In order to reproduce that kind of sound, we have to move a column of air about 25 feet in length. That's a lot of air to move. And so it takes a lot of power and generally a very big driver. So once again, these specifications can help you center around products that are probably going to solve your need based on how you want to use it, what room, and also what kind of music or sound you're trying to reproduce. My voice is in the mid frequencies, about 1,000 cycles in the range. It's easy to reproduce, and you wouldn't really want to hear me all that loud, so not a lot of power needed. That's why things like communication products can often use quite modest power. But if we're listening to classical music with great dynamic range and a lot of bass frequencies or rock that might want that, we may need bigger drivers and more power to reproduce it at the right sound pressure level for how close or far or how big or small the room is. Specifications are helpful, but nothing beats listening to the actual product.